Now for our story. Paul Cromwell's man, Max, sat by the window of Cromwell's room in a Chicago hotel, looking down on the busy early evening traffic. It was very cold outside, but nevertheless, Max had the window open a bit. Though he'd lived in America many years, he'd never become accustomed to the blasts of heat in which Americans seemed to be most comfortable. Besides, the cold stream of air coming in from outside gave him a pleasant nostalgia, reminding him of the drafty corridors of his family home in the old country. In his reminiscent mood, Max allowed his thoughts to drift aimlessly, reviewing the many years he'd spent with Paul. The two had been together so long that their relationship was far more intimate, more comradely than was typical. And yet, Max retained a certain reticence. There were some things he hesitated to say. Now, while he waited for Paul to return from his visit to Lisa Fenner, Max was thinking, he have been gone more than an hour. I imagine he's having an uncomfortable time of it. Mrs. Fenner will scarcely accept his news calmly. Yes, I'm afraid Mr. Cromwell is rather a desperate, unhappy man at the present moment. In a way, then, he deserves to suffer a bit. Have a few bad moments. This was bound to happen. One could see it coming when we were all in Malibu. Mrs. Me, Mrs. Fenner, two beautiful women with such different minds. Ah, there's a sort of petty justice in it, too. Mr. Cromwell sets out to deceive one of them, while the other sets out to deceive him. I knew from the first that something would go wrong. But Mrs. Mead was determined to take Mrs. Fenner's child. Mrs. Fenner was sure to regret it from the beginning. I think deep within, she's never relinquished her claim to her child. And Mrs. Mead has no real affection for it. Ah, but it was another reason, and now it revealed itself. <laughs> Poor Mrs. Mead. Taking another woman's child, trying to hold her husband's love by such a section. Oh, Mr. Paul. Well, Max, that's that. You might as well begin packing. I have packed, Mr. Conwell. Oh, anticipating as usual. And as usual, correct, eh, Max? My intuition told me he would be leaving soon. Yes. Well, if we're packed, as you say, then the next problem is reservation. In which direction are we traveling this time, Mr. Conwell? I think we'll go home, Max. Philadelphia. Max, if you ever see me letting myself in for a similar catastrophe, stop me somehow, please. I'll try, Mr. Conwell. But if you remember, my efforts along that line were somewhat unpopular during our recent maneuvers. Yes, I know that. But next time I promise to listen to you. If it's necessary, I give you full permission to beat me over the head with some blunt instrument, anything, to make me realize the danger. I only hope such extreme measures will not be necessary if there is a next time. Which I doubt very much. No, Max, I think between them, Lisa and Kit have convinced me that I'm not equipped for such a struggle. And yet, Mrs. Fenner particularly can hardly be called an aggressive type of woman. No, she's far from it, Max. But Lisa has her own sort of strength. Today, when I told her the truth, that I never intended to marry her, she somehow put me at a disadvantage. Perhaps, Mr. Conwell, it was not Mrs. Fenno who put you at a disadvantage. Perhaps it was your own conscience. Yes, I'm afraid you're right again, Max. Worse luck. Lisa behaved with such dignity. She, she made me feel like a contemptible, cold-blooded scoundrel. Which, of course, I've been. Unfortunately, it would appear so. Yes, I know, Max, I know. There's no need to heap hot coals on my head. I haven't the faintest justification for my treatment of that girl, except the fact that I let Kit Mead pull me around by the by the end of the nose. Quite, Mr. Cromwell. Yes, and I'm not a schoolboy, after all. I ought to have known months ago that Kit was up to something. Lord knows you tried to make me see it in your own subtle way. In fact, sir... I feel somewhat responsible. Perhaps I should have been less, um, as you say, subtle and more direct. Oh, no, Max. It's my own fault, the old story. Wanting something so much that I was blind to the right or wrong of getting it, and finally I didn't care. 
Oh, I did have scruples originally. I hated to take advantage of Lisa's emotional nature, her love for me. But gradually, Kit had me seeing things her way. And a heartless, selfish way it was, too. In the end, I think, such a way will not bring happiness to Mrs. Mead. For a time, it may seem to be successful, but finally... I only hope you're right about that, Max. And I have a feeling you may be. If Lisa goes to Wakefield and goes after her child... Exactly. In the end, Mrs. Fenner may become the instrument of justice. That, Max, is something I'd like to see. Kit Mead exposed to the whole village. The contempt of the townspeople exposed as something very much akin to a child stealer. That would stop Kit for once. And, as you say, Mrs. Fenner has her own sort of strength. The strength of a womanly woman who will go to any extreme to protect her child. Yes, I don't think I'd want to be in Kit's shoes when Lisa arrives in town. But I don't even want to think about it anymore. In the meantime, we have our own immediate problem, the reservations. Uh, look, Max, I have to get a haircut. Suppose you go on down and see what you can do about getting tickets. You may have trouble, but do your best. Yes, please. Mr. Conwell. Good. I'll meet you here in about an hour, then. And when Paul arrived back at his rooms a little later, he found Max there before him, looking rather pleased with himself. Back already, Max? Yes, Mr. Conwell, for some time. No luck on the tickets, I gather. Oh, on the contrary. I have reservations for tonight's train at 10.30. Really? Well, I understood they were very difficult to get. Well, uh, there's a charming woman in the office. She uh, confessed to a witness for accidents. <laughs> well, good for you, Max. You and Charles Boyer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, did Mrs. Fenner call since you've been back? No. <laughs> I rather expected she would. It's not like Lisa, too. Well, I should be grateful, but it worries me. Um, was Mrs. Fenner, um, disturbed when you left her? Oh, that's just the trouble. She was almost too composed. Max, you don't think she might do something, something drastic, do you? Well, it's hard to say, Mr. Cromwell. But I would advise you to telephone at least. And perhaps you should see her before you leave. Yes, that's a good idea. Call her, will you, Max? Very good, Mr. Cromwell. Give me Mrs. Lisa Fenner's room, please. I hope she's there. Mrs. Fenner? Uh, this is Matt. Thank heaven. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Fenner. Mr. Conwell wishes to speak with you. Yes, here, Mr. Conwell. Thank you, Max. Hello, Lisa? Yes, Paul? I... That is, I, I just wondered if you're all right. All right, Paul? Isn't that rather an odd question? Uh, yes, Lisa, I, I suppose it is. But but you see, I'm, I'm checking out of the hotel tonight, and... I was wondering if you'd care to dine with me. Our train doesn't leave until 10.30 and... Thank you, Paul, but I'd rather not. Lisa, I'd just like to tell you that... Well, I, I think you're taking this thing beautifully. You do? You're so calm, composed. That's because I have no tears left to cry, Paul. Oh, Lisa, I... Please don't say it, Paul. It's too late. Yes. Yes, of course it is. But at least, won't you give me an idea of what you plan to do, where you'll be and... Why should I, Paul? I thought you wanted to be clear of all these complications. But, Lisa, I'd feel much better if I were sure you were going to be all right. It would clear your conscience if I could reassure you, is that it? All right, Paul. You needn't worry. Lisa... No, you're quite free of me, Paul. Absolutely free. Whatever I do now is no concern of yours. As Paul hung up the receiver... He felt more puzzled than relieved, despite Lisa's calm assurance that she could take care of herself. Her composure seemed unnatural. It gave him the impression that she had something very definite in mind. Paul was right. Lisa Fenner did have a plan. A plan which involved a trip to Wakefield. 